So when I was asked to speak about this and the questions um, that were posed to us and Sumat had, Suman had put up on his slides, I was really torn about which question do I tackle because each one's really large. So I'm just gonna make four important points um, and then we can open it up for discussion. So the first one is about the kind of, the notion that the science is absolute truth. And I think following on from Suman's talk, it's pretty evident that what we hold as dear as science, which is often treated as some objective knowledge, truth, power thing out there, there's no such thing, right? And yet the SDGs um, rely on this kind of hard data and this absolute belief that science is good and that science is neutral. But science is mutable and there are many different ways of knowing and being in the world. And science is definitely not neutral, it's entirely about power. So what counts? is determined by hegemonies that are historically white, masculine, heteropatriarchal, imperial, and often hubristic. So as a result, when we think about science or evidence as objective, we're almost reproducing those kinds of um, historical and ideological lineages, and we must be careful of that. Because what we think is objective or is taken to be objective may not be. It may be very subjective. It's very political and is often instrumentalized to appeal to be, to appeal as neutral and universalizing when it's not, when it's serving a certain kind of power relation. And, <clears throat> excuse me, in the earlier panel, we talked about con context uh, dependency of different kinds of evidence, um, which I'm not gonna go into. I'm actually looking at a very kind of ontological issue about what we think we know and why we think we know it and why it becomes important in policymaking. So um, feminist critiques of science and what we think are, is science is, is longstanding and I will not repeat that, but one thing that's really come out is that this God eye trick. So this is going back to what Olivier was talking about in terms of a different terminology, not the two feet and the two boat, although it might sound similar, but I think that was a French word. I'm not using what he was talking about. I'm using the God eye trick, which is a view from nowhere. So scientists and scientists and medicine people have always presumed to carry out this depersonalized, disembodied God eye trick. Um, and it's incredibly hubristic. And what feminist scholars um, have critiqued it is that instead we should be looking at issues around standpoint theory or situated knowledge, which is accounts for objectivity and evidence, but accounts for both the agency of the knowledge producer and that the object of the study. So it's the object of the study and the person who's producing the knowledge, both are accounted for. So this God eye trick is um, not perpetuated and knowledge production becomes very embodied. And if we look at it from there, we come to realize that there are incredible gender and racial biases in science. Um, not in just who the science is perpetuated on, but who does the science and whose data counts, whose knowledge gets to count. And that there are structural and systemic barriers to entry, access, acceptance, as well as ideologies in which, is the, which becomes hegemonic scientific data or knowledge that becomes important. And in this process, the different kinds of evidence that we talked about in the earlier session start to kind of disappear because there's always this kind of power hierarchy and which kind of knowledge gets to count over others. And what we're seeing as a result is that there's this kind of hegemony of more of the natural or physical sciences often, and not so much of other ways of knowing or other ontologies or cosmologies or not even the other social sciences, except for um, economics. Economics is kind of the big dog in, in the race and all of this. So in, when we think about this kind of over fetishization of certain kinds of knowledge and certain kinds of doing science, and um, over specification or over um, importance of looking at data that is quantitative, and not qualitative, we start to reproduce this obsession of objectively observable results. Because as we talked about, things are um, not only biased from the beginning in the way they're theorized, the methodologies pursue the ontologies that undergird them, but also that not everything is reproducible everywhere all the time. And more importantly, we need to start asking, what is evidence? What gets to count as evidence? These are not neutral questions the way we often perceive them or the way they're thought to be in the development world because evidence and what counts is inherently about power and power relations. It is about the power to name it, the, the power to name what is important and what gets to count and therefore what gets to be valued. So sometimes my concern is that this obsession with metrics of validation reproducibility become highly problematic because it becomes very reductionist. And it becomes incredibly, um, ham it hamstrings, 
hamstrings the process of thinking creatively or addressing very complex problems. So this can therefore often be solved through transdisciplinarity, which means working not just interdisciplinarily amongst different scholars, but with citizen stakeholders, with the average public and different kinds of testimonies that, that was mentioned in the prior session. But also it kind of raises issues around um, in increasing different uh, weightage given to different kinds of voices and also in terms of what gets to count. So therefore this kind of makes us look back into how do we address these power relations in institutions and discourses? And how do we advance the kind of co-creation of knowledge and the collaborations that are needed to kind of peel back this onion of ideologies that often obscure our vision. So we need to therefore focus more on issues around equity and accountability through the deep questioning of the ideological positions, the biases, the systemic sexism, the institutional racism, or the historical scientific racism that someone was um, <clears throat> mentioning. So this leads me to um, the kind of second point about the where development comes from. So development is an outcome of colonialism. Development arrived the moment decolonization formally started. Um, and those of you who've studied development in theory and practice already know about the Bretton Woods institutions. So a lot of scholars have called development in many, many ways very neocolonial. So if we think along that, and if we take it to its ontolo um, kind of tautological end, we can think about, well, colon colonialism benefited from scientific racism on creating the self versus the other and a lot of orientalist gazing. How are we reproducing those kinds of issues in the current development thinking and development practice? So when we think about how ontologies, epistemologies, and methodologies of science has been critiqued by feminists and other scholars, then we can start to think about how these, are, these kind of critiques have to apply to the very institutions who may be reproducing them through their policies, who, because they're fetishizing science and Western knowledge over other kinds of knowledges, other bodies, lived lives, and lived experiences. Because we know that scientific racism fueled empire building and colonialism from measuring of skulls as sign of intelligence to skin color for aptitude, basically biological determinism, but also environmental determinism where the, your environment and your climate determined your character. And these kind of orientalist and racist thought, thought still do influence both development planning and environmental planning. And to deny that would be to be quite, um, Foolish, in my opinion, because it means basically ignoring something that's there, the elephant in the room. Because when we think about the fact that development is not neutral and it has this baggage that's come with it over time, despite the way it's been reformulated and despite the fact that it is doing a whole lot better each decade because of more accountability, more transparency, or more stakeholder consultation, that these kind of racist Western hegemonic thought still show up in who are the consultants, who are the planners, who does the planning, who does the financing. And this kind of power imbalance that exists geopolitically and across scales still maintain those kind of misogynistic, sexist, and racist, and other biases, despite our good efforts to try to deconstruct it. So what I'm trying to do is get us to recognize that we have not arrived yet. We have not deconstructed all of this. So as a result, if we start to think about how do we reduce this orientalist gaze that still remains hegemonic despite the changes in recent years, what are the things that we can start to think about doing beyond um, better data collection, thinking about what is actually evidence and data or what is science about collaboration? I think we need to also understand that there's a real disjuncture often between the kind of Western scientific knowledge that informs development planning versus local realities, local cosmologies, and lived experiences. And as a result, this, this, this leads to often what are called failed development projects or not reaching the target or lack of fund mobilization because there's a disjuncture in the outcome and the plan because there's been a disjuncture in the ontology from the beginning. So therefore what is counts and what is collected is that disconnect needs to be addressed. So yes, there's an importance in the kind of science-based or evidence-based um, data that influences policy, but I think we need to re-question what that evidence actually is and who holds that evidence and who gets to count it or produce that evidence for us. So we know that there is still a kind of subjugation that's going on globally through development instructions, through monies, through institutional politics, and through geopolitics. And 
a lot of issues around evidence or discounts or this is scientific knowledge is mobilized in order to maintain those kinds of hegemonies and hierarchies, we need to start to question, again, whose authority counts here? Whose voice is getting to count? What kind of knowledge is being mobilized for what kind of political gain? We need to question who the experts are, whether they're the planners or the external people who are brought in, but all at the same time, who are the stakeholders? Who are being consulted? Because often, It'll be the men in a community who are asked to give their voice, but all communities are gendered and class. If you don't do proper intersectionality analysis, you're going to get very masculine biased data from your so-called stakeholders. So therefore, this kinds of issues that play out or what Binagarwal calls participatory exclusions within participatory development projects need to be addressed a lot more meaningfully and thoughtfully. And, and I'll end with this kind of um, other idea that having um, worked in development before becoming an academic, the concern that I've always had is about tokenism. That there's a lot of tokenism that goes on that we now have gender representation. But we also have to look at the, the ideological power hierarchies that are at play, and then what kinds of discourses are repeated or parroted or reproduced. Because what we're seeing is that what, whose voice counts not just only outside the institution but also within the institution. And therefore we need to take seriously more issues around inclusion and justice in both how policies are planned and devised and by whom and for whom and how that monitoring, evaluation and learning, MEL occurs. But recognize at the end of the day, we carry the baggage of the white savior complex and I call this the development savior complex that we need to do better um, issues around reflexivity of accountability of positionality and addressing power relations, or else we are basically all carrying the cloak of the white savior complex and doing great harm. Thank you. <laughs>